In this video, we will talk about 12 factor app. While understanding each of the factors of 12 factor app, we will also learn how they are implemented, where they are implemented, and an application of these factors in microservice architecture, how the architecture becomes clear, clean, scalable, and portable. So basically, 12 factor is set of guidelines or set of rules or set of suggestions that has been transformed and concised based on the problems and the solutions developed over the time. So let's start with the first factor that is code base. Now suppose you have a developed code. So in a project, you need to let other team members know about this code. So you need a code base. By the term code base, I mean I need a repository. So this code base say one code base tracked in revision control and many deploys. So the developed code is committed to a repository. Let's say the repository could be Git, SVN, Mercurial, depending upon the project requirement. Now, what is meant by one code base tracked in revision control many deploys? Let's understand this term. So, suppose you have an application you deploy to a repository named App1 repo. From this App1 repo, you Post your code to the dev environment using CI CD pipeline. Now, here you have one to one relationship between repository and the environment. So, in a typical enterprise or real time project, we have multiple environment like dev, QA, prod, stage. So, in order to deploy the same code to the QA environment, I can use the same repo. Other approach could be, for example, instead of deploying to the QA from App1 repo, you make another repo, let's say App1 repo1, and deploy the code from App1 repo1 to the QA. But according to the 12 factor app, this approach is not feasible. The reason is you are duplicating the same code base unnecessary multiple times. So instead of having multiple repository for a single application or project, you can use a single application, single repository principle and deploy the single repository to the multiple environment. In case your project contains multi-module, use submodule of Git so that each submodule has single sub-repository. So always remember for code base, they should be one code base tracked in revision control for simplicity and from that code base, you should deploy to multiple environment. Let's move to the next factor that is dependency. Now when we say dependency, we generally refer pom.xml, right? So this dependency say explicitly declare and isolate your dependencies. So let's again understand what is meant by this term. Now suppose you have application, the same application and you mentioned your dependencies means the jars required for your application in pom.xml. So if you're creating a microservice using Spring Boot, you have a parent tag and you have child dependency. So the version will be referred from the parent. Now, all these dependency are referred from Maven Center repository and a local copy of all these jars is put in .m2 folder of your system. Now, if you see for a particular application, say app one, you are isolating all the dependencies at one place that is pom.xml. Apart from this dependency, 
other dependencies for the application could be server or any configurations also particular for that server so in case of microservice spring boot is preferable for java and using maven so in a spring boot you have embedded server so server could be embedded in the artifact itself now other point could be if you are using a custom library that is developed by your own so instead of committing that custom library into the repository better put it into some storage repository like jfrog or nexus for reference to every team member and isolating it from other one so in order to overall summarize it is important to explicitly isolate and declare because there should not be any version mismatch of the jars one dependency of one project should not interfere with the other project dependency so we can say that place jar in central repository at one place use storage repository like jfrog nexus for storage of custom libraries or the artifacts embed server in the artifact so this one is already provided to you by spring boot moving towards the next factor so configuration is again a important aspect because in general in a monolithic we put configurations as part of dot xml file and this xml file is part of your code right so this config says that store the config in the environment so let's understand what is meant by store config in the environment now the configuration doesn't mean only server configuration or what you mention in your application or properties only instead it could mean that the backing service configurations how you attach backing services your db credentials so for different environment you could have different db credentials also so let's say we have pivotal cloud dev environment and in this dev environment we have an application that is deployed so the configurations like uh, credentials of the db instead of putting in application or properties we can use the environment of pivotal cloud or we can use backing services like config server and put the configurations in git repository and then using a ci cd pipeline whenever we change we push the change configurations to the config server and using cloud bus and a refresh endpoint those configurations would be automatically reflected now the advantage of storing the configuration outside of your application code is you do not need to deploy the application whenever the change would be in your configuration so these configurations are basically environment dependent like i said the db credentials so the dev environment db credentials would be different than the prod db credentials so you can say configurations and credentials which are environment dependent and frequently changing should not be stored as a part of the code you can store it in a repository and make it available via use of config server or if you are using any pass platform like pcf you can store it as environment variables when i say backing services what is meant by backing services so backing services say treat any service as attached resources in microservice architecture apart from the core code any other services that are using like config server like messaging queue like cache like db are treated as backing services so these backing services like 
DB message queue cache should be treated as attached resources and these attached resources are easier to plug and play model. Moving to next factor that is build release run. Now let's understand this factor build release run. As the name suggests, it is mostly related to CI CD pipeline. So, how you deploy your code from the repository to the cloud or any traditional server? It says that. So, according to build release run, you should have strictly separate build and run stages. That means the CI pipeline should be independent of CD pipeline. CI means continuous integration, CD means continuous deployment. So, in order to deploy this app from the repository, I would need a CI pipeline and then CD pipeline. So, once the CI pipeline is successful, the CD pipeline will automatically run and attach the configurations of your backing services and then start the application. So the next factor is process. So the process say execute the app as one or more stateless process. By the term stateless means two apps should not share anything between them. Any sharing of data or context should be happened through the endpoints only. And in case you want to store the state of the application, store it in a backing services like cache, db, messaging queue. So one app, one process should be modeled. No sharing between apps should be done. Any sharing should happen through endpoints. Do not store the state of services in the application itself. If you need to store, do it in attached resources like DB, messaging queue or cache. Moving towards the next factor that is port binding. So this factor say export services via port binding. If you remember in traditional applications development, we have deployed the application to any application or web server. So in case of microservice, each application is standalone. So each application, like in case of Spring Boot, we have an embedded server. So each application could be started on your own without the need of any external containers. And if you want to communicate with the other, you need to access the port on which the application is running. So each application has a unique port or you can say a unique URL through which it could be accessed. So instead of dependent on physical server, each application has embedded server and you can access services through embedded server port. The applications act as standalone. Moving towards the next factor that is concurrency. Concurrency says scale out via process model. So scaling should be smooth and it should be based on the load or the traffic that is coming to the environment. Disposability. The term disposability means generally to shut down, right? But here disposability means maximize robustness with fast startup and graceful shutdown. So startup and shutdown of services should be graceful. So there should be a quick start and shutdown of the application. In case of failure, there should be a compensation action. So resilience in case of failure. Now the process factor 
port binding concurrency disposability all are belonging to your application itself so these factors are very much important in terms of portability scaling and maintenance of your project moving towards the next factor that is day prod parity as the name suggests day prod parity means let's say you have multiple environment like again dev qa prod so there should be similarity as much possible between development staging and production so in case of microservice architecture generally now we use containers so in order to avoid parity better to use containers like docker to create image and deploy same image to different environment so let's talk about logs generally in traditional development environment we do not care about logs but 12 factors say logs is very much important and logs should be treated as event streams so in case of microservice generally we treat log as a stream and make it available to the standard output and these logs are continuous as much as your application runs and you can also transmit these logs to storage systems like splunk or elk stack where you can process the logs and visualize the logs with respect to each request also and the last factor is admin process just like all the process that we mentioned above there is admin process like anything that is part of administration like spinning up of new server uh, db migration so all this process should be a part of your application only and but this process should be isolated so like for example in case of db migration sting application should not be affected so the first five factor code base dependency config backing services build religion are mostly related to the deployment and the repository so this was all about 12 factor app stay tuned notified and subscribe for upcoming springwood microservice cloud java and interview questions videos